So you've set up your database, you're ready to go. Now you actually need to bring some data into your database or data warehouse. How do you get started? That's the focus of today's video, which is the third part of our series focusing on how to learn Spatial SQL. The first database we're gonna start with is PostJS. Now there's a few different methods to actually do this. The one I recommend, especially for beginners, is actually using QGIS. Now, if you connect QGIS to your PostJS database, there's actually a really simple way to actually import your data. It's really just loading a shapefile, connecting it, and using this interface to do so. There's a full video here. You can actually check out the exact steps to do this. So if this is your first time doing this, I would definitely start with using QGIS to import your data. There are three different native tools you can actually use to bring your data into PostGIS. Shape2PSQL is a command line tool that allows you to upload shapefiles into your database. Now, if you're not familiar with the command line, this can seem daunting, but it's actually pretty simple. There's a full guide here on this and the next two resources that we'll cover to bring your data into PostGIS in the links below. The next is one of the strangest names in geospatial, Ogre to Ogre. I'm an ogre! It's a part of the GDAL library, Geographic Data Extraction Library, which is really popular and really a part of everything that we use in a modern GIS ecosystem. This actually lets you translate a shapefile, GeoJSON, or uh, many different other file types into a PostGIS file that you can then load into your database. The final one is the copy command. Now, if you've turned your data or you already have your data in a CSV format, this is a really effective way to almost stream your data into a Postgres database. You actually have to create your table before you stream your data in. So that's one extra piece here. You actually have to know the schema of your table. But once you actually load the CSV table, this is really effective for large data sets. Just a quick aside here, talking about how to turn geospatial data into a CSV. Now, this is going to be actually useful in the next several steps that we'll cover because most of the data warehouses really accept CSV files as one of their core file types. In the future, a lot of these will actually accept GeoParquet, which is a geospatial file type itself. But for now, CSV is the way to go. You're going to want to install and use GDAL to run those over to over commands. So you can take a shapefile, a GeoJSON, a KML, or basically any file type that you have and turn it into a CSV. So one little step to note here is that you actually want to create a geometry out of your geographic data. Now, just to be extra sure, you can actually use this little snippet here to add into your ogre to ogre command. It runs querying it using spatial light, which is a really lightweight uh, spatial database within the stream of data you're creating within GDAL. So you can actually turn this into a GeoJSON or a regular well-known text geometry or even well-known binary. And you actually use it using Spatial SQL, strangely enough. This is a great way to make sure that your data will get imported and ingested properly into the database or data warehouse that you're using. For the next step, let's talk about getting spatial data into Amazon Redshift. Now, getting any data into Amazon Redshift uses the copy command that we actually talked about with Postgres. So this is pretty easy if you've done that yourself or understand the concepts behind it. The first step is to do what we just did, turn your data into a CSV with the dedicated column for your geospatial data. Next thing you wanna do is upload your data to S3, which is your data storage within Amazon Web Services. From there, you wanna create your table. Now, I didn't mention this earlier, but you can actually use this library called DDL Generator to read a CSV and create a create table statement directly from that data. All the different code and tutorials I'm mentioning today are in the links below, so go ahead and check those out for a few of the resources. The next step is to run the copy command, which is actually going to stream that data that lives in that S3 bucket directly into that table. So once you run that, there's a few other arguments and parameters you can input. So keep that in mind, but check out the resources to check out this full process. The next is running this in BigQuery. Now, BigQuery has another set of tools that you can actually use, but it's pretty similar to what we did with Redshift. You actually are going to create, once again, a CSV file, upload that to Google Cloud Storage, which is the comparable version of S3. Once it's in there, then you can actually do this a couple of ways. You can pull that data in by the command line. You can run it in the user interface. Both work the same way, so it's totally up to you how you want to do this. They do have another command line option to directly import GeoJSON. This does need to be a specific type of GeoJSON. It's new line delimited GeoJSON, not your standard GeoJSON format. So keep that in mind. So the next method we're going to talk about is loading data into Snowflake. Now, once again, it's pretty similar to the processes that we've talked about. You're gonna to wanna to create that CSV file first. So the first two steps are actually gonna be creating a staging location. The next thing you're gonna do is actually gonna put a file format with a file name into that staging area. And then you're going to place that CSV into that same location you just created. Once there, you're gonna run your create table statement. You can use that same DDL generator to generate your create table statement once again to create that table in Snowflake. 
And once you've done all that, you can actually run the copy command to copy that data into that new table that you've created, and all that should be ready to go for you. Now, keep in mind with Redshift, BigQuery, and Snowflake, there may be instances where the geometry doesn't copy the exact way you want it to. If you do hit this issue, make sure you use the make valid flag when you're translating your data into a CSV, that's really important, or create it as a GeoJSON text string, because GeoJSON does a little bit of a better job in these data warehouses of translating into the geometries. Once you've done all that, you can use one of the functions in there to actually turn the GeoJSON into a geometry. They look different in each of the data warehouses, but I added those into the documentation so you can take a look at those too. So the last tool I've been using quite a bit is called Airbyte. Now Airbyte is an open source ELT tool. You might have heard of ETL or Extract, Transform, and Load. Airbyte takes a little bit of a different approach called Extract, Load, and Transform, and it turns your data and many other data sources into JSON that puts it into other data sources. Now, this can ingest into any of the common databases and data warehouses that I mentioned. The best way to do this is use that CSV that you created earlier and establish a file source. Now, to download Airbyte, you need Docker, so you can actually pull a Docker image of Airbyte, install it on your computer, or you can install it in a cloud service as well. It's three commands to get it up and running, and once it's there, you can open it up in your browser and actually create a source, like you see here from a file source. Once that's done, you create your connection to your database or data warehouse, and then you connect the two. Once that's done, you can actually run and create a connection. Now, if you don't select the option to transform the data, it'll be pulled into raw JSON, and you'll have to extract that once it comes into your data warehouse. So make sure to check this option. Once that's done, all your data should be there, and then you can actually create a geometry in your data warehouse. Now, the ELT format allows you to actually extract and load that data and then use your source location to transform that data, wherever that might be. If you want to get really advanced and fancy with this, it actually creates a DBT project, which is a really popular data engineering tool in Air Airbyte itself. You can actually extract the dbt file from Airbyte, modify it, and then load it to GitHub to run a custom transformation in that same pipeline. Now you can schedule this, run it as many times as you want, and that's really the nice flexible thing about Airbyte that I really like. So that's a tutorial about loading geospatial data into your database or your data warehouse. My recommendation is get started with something simple, and then as you grow, expand those skills and you can work on more complicated processes too. In our next video, we're going to talk all about the geometry or the geography object, which really is the foundation for learning about spatial SQL. So, We'll see you then.